a good idea then, a good idea now. Smart policy, sound science, stronger communities. Where were you in 1972? Can't remember? Well, here are a few hints. They didn't award a Nobel Peace Prize in 1972. The North Vietnamese walked away from the Paris peace talks. And then there's the unprecedented trip by President Richard Milhouse Nixon involving the historic eight-day summit conference in China. Who could forget the five men caught red-handed at the Watergate Hotel? Tragically, 11 athletes were murdered at the Munich Olympic Village. And the 92nd Congress sent the Equal Rights Amendment to the states for ratification. We were at the cusp of a quickly expanding environmental crisis. War and famine were taking their tolls, killing millions of people worldwide. Universities were rife with unrest and disillusionment. But among all the crisis, clamor, and controversy were many visionaries who sought answers, saw ways to make things work, and wanted to build a cadre of educated people to take on the challenges of the 1970s and beyond. Among those people working hard to develop education and government programs to better our communities, our nation, and our world was Dr. John W. Ryan. Dr. Ryan recognized the need for a school that could respond to the complex challenges of the times, a school that forged new areas of research and study in the critical areas of public administration and environmental science. It was Dr. Ryan's vision that catapulted IU's approval of what would become the School of Public and Environmental Affairs, known as SPIA. And what a good idea it has been. Today, the largest school of its type in the nation and the highest ranked school of its kind at a public institution, SPIA has nearly 4,000 students university-wide, about 1,100 graduate students, more than 2,800 undergraduate students, and 23,000 alumni worldwide. As the school looks forward to the next 30 years, it's appropriate and fitting to stop for a moment and take a look at where we've been, and more importantly, some of the people and actions that got us here. In the 1960s, many at Indiana University were grappling with how the university's extensive resources might be brought together to address contemporary public problems. Professors York Wilburn and Linton Caldwell from the Political Science Department, Lynn Merritt, Vice President of Research for IU, and Ralph Cleland, IU's Distinguished Professor of Botany, were just a few of the early advocates for SPIA. Yet it was John Ryan who rallied the faculty, trustees, and the Commission for Higher Education, creating a new school from 11 different programs already in existence at IU. And it was John Ryan who brought in the founding dean, Chuck Bonser, a critical first step toward the school's success. I talked to George Pinnell, who was my vice president and very close friend, and I trusted his judgment. I said, George, we have this uh, committee report recommending we have a School of Public Environmental Affairs. I've appointed a, a, a planning committee to uh, organize the beginnings of a school. Uh, I need a, a, a real live wire, active person who understands the academic community and uh, understands Indiana University to be the sort of executive secretary for this planning committee. And he said, well, do you know Chuck Bouncer? I said, no, I don't. He said, he's the guy. You know, trying to figure out why he would even think about me for something like that, um, uh, I guess it was because I had background in government. I worked in state government and was the uh, director of the Tax and Financing Policy Commission and uh, uh, worked with the legislature and the governor and folks like that. So I had that in my background. He knew how to uh, relate to the uh, legislature and the governor and, uh, and he knew how to deal with uh, the procedures in the university. And he was very highly thought of. In fact, he was an assistant dean or associate dean in the School of Business. And I've always felt, I did then and I do now, 
that the public administration part of SPIA really is a special application of the principles that you find in management in a business school. And I thought he'd understand that. When I started thinking about this and getting into it, and, I'm, and I know John had the same view, that uh, what we needed really in, in the public affairs, public administration arena was sort of a business school for the public sector is what we're really talking about. We didn't, never said that out loud, but because some folks wouldn't have liked that, but that's really what we're uh, talking about. So he asked if, if I'd be willing to uh, leave the business school, give up my sabbatical, and go into his office with the title of Special Assistant to the President, and um, uh, do the, the plan, put together the, uh, you know, the details on a School of Public Environmental Affairs. So I uh, made uh, Chuck Bonser the secretary or executive director of this planning committee and he did such an outstanding job that to my mind there was just uh, uh, no reason to look any further for the beginning dean. You have to understand what the context of Indiana was at the time of the creation of the School of Public and Environmental Affairs. Uh, Indiana in the Midwest probably had the least professionalized public service at the state and local level of any in the Midwest. And, in, uh, and frankly, the, the universities weren't doing very much about it. Public administration, more professionalized and modern public administration, was going to be required, not just in Indiana, but nationwide as state governments and local governments were taking on so many more domestic responsibilities and that the universities would have to support this if it was gonna have any chance of success and there were going to be um, some leaders among universities in fulfilling this mission and there were going to be followers and it was his vision that Indiana University was going to be a leader and uh, it turned out he was right. Uh, SPIA represented a step uh, forward, a modernizing, uh, a, a, a streamlining of the university's effectiveness. Over the course of uh, 17 years we went from um, ground zero to um, number three ranked program in the country. Well, when I came to school, to the school in 1988, I think the SPI I saw was really the living embodiment of John Ryan's vision for the school. I saw a program that, that where there were very strong uh, programs in the major uh, uh, urban areas of the state, uh, Fort Wayne, South Bend, uh, Northwest Indiana that had very strong connections with the, the local governments in those areas. That there were uh, on the Bloomington and Indianapolis end faculty that very well connected with the state government, particularly in the fiscal responsibility uh, policy areas. One of the great assets of SPIA is that it grew up on five campuses. To be sure, Bloomington and Indianapolis are probably the cornerstones of the school. Um, and they each contribute distinct and complementary assets to the school. Our campuses to the north uh, in uh, Gary, Indiana, in South Bend, as well as Fort Wayne, connected the school to the grassroots of Indiana and the rich array of problems that confront communities and citizens in their day-to-day -day lives. I guess the other dimension that I note is, and I think really following the uh, Herman Wells and John Ryan legacy was a very strong international dimension to the uh, school. Uh, the school had uh, connections in, in Europe, in the Mideast, particularly in, so and in Southeast Asia. There were student exchange programs. There were, were faculty that were going abroad to work with uh, institutions, governmental and universities in other uh, countries and so I mean SPIA was was there all the way from working with township officials uh, to working with people um, halfway around the uh, world. I found a treasury of talent. Um, it was evident in the programs and public affairs which are nationally ranked that are alongside of equally pioneering programs in environmental science. What was even richer than I ever anticipated was the range and depth of expertise on the faculty. And what also was a great surprise was the range and expertise um, that the alumni had achieved in the careers that they pursued once they left SPIA. I work for the United States Agency for International Development, 
um, in Afghanistan. And my role uh, in USAID is in the program office. Um, one of the things that I'm involved in that's interesting is a President Karzai-led initiative on um, how the donors in the military and the government will address the um, insurgency and the development aids in southern Afghanistan. SPIA helped me get ready for this USAID um, job that I'm currently in in a couple of different ways. Um, one was that because I had the opportunity to get both an MPA and an MSES degree, um, one of the skills I took from that is essentially working almost as a translator between the technical um, specialist and policy. Probably one of the biggest influences in my life from SPIA was uh, one professor. He really encouraged all of the students to not just answer the questions and look at the facts, but to think analytically and question the assumed and every day to strive for excellence. Well, SPIA, to me, is one of the most exciting things that I was privileged to be involved with in my career. Nobody else was really doing what SPIA charted itself to do. It was not, uh, not just another job. Uh, we, all, we all knew we had an opportunity to, uh, that most people go through their lives and never have, to be able to build something new like this. It could have a you know, substantial impact on society. There's a real purpose to what we do as an academic institution, and that is we are all about serving our communities. A good idea then, and a great idea now.